Olison on the return and down inside the 25-yard line. Bailey Hockman, the starting quarterback for NC State. The question is, how many snaps will he get? But meet Bailey Hockman. He's from Powder Springs, Georgia, the high school powerhouse at McEachern, where his dad, Kyle, was his head coach. Bailey Hockman was a redshirt at FSU in 2017 for the Seminoles. He transferred to NC State. He makes his sixth career start tonight. And the one thing to look out for for him is his decisiveness say his coaches when he's getting the ball out he's playing very well Hockman to throw on first down and the lefty is on target to Devin Carter second yeah, down and see, short you see Tim Beck give him an easy throw a nice quick out so that he builds on that confidence he can play with confidence just trusting himself playing with confidence is what Tim Beck's looking for from his quarterback Bailey Hockman First run of the ball game for NC State. Gets him a first down. It is Ricky Person Jr. back from the concussion. And NC State moves the six, uh, sticks on a gain of six. Yeah, and watch this tempo that NC State operates with. They get a first down. They want to press the gas. Person and Knight, the two backs, are outstanding. This is Person with a crease off the left-hand side. And it's a gain of nine on first down for NC State. Miami giving up 150 yards per game on the ground is exactly where Tim Beck has chosen to go. They throw once on first down, come back, run the football twice. And that's really one of the strengths of this offense. Person and Knight in the backfield. Hey, you see middle of the road defense in terms of the rush as Person is driven back. That was the middle linebacker, Bradley Jennings Jr., to stop him. He's coming off a down. major hip injury, the same in the, that Tua really faced, and they are glad to have him back and close to uh, close to 100%. They did give him the first down, so they will move the chains on that run. He did just get enough, and Hockman will throw on first down. He sends it on its way, and he's got a seam ball to the 31-yard line, and Mecca and Mezzi gain of 33. We told you big plays are coming. Uh, excellent read by the quarterback. Just going to hold the safety, and it's just a, a release of, in terms of man-to-man -man coverage. you got to beat man-to-man -man when you play Miami, and NC State off to a, an absolute fantastic start on offense. Doing a nice job, Jason, of mixing both the run and the pass, just enough to keep the Hurricanes off balance. Opening drive of the ball game, some pre-snap motion. They will throw it back for Hockman. He's got the catch with a convoy in front of him, and it's a touchdown. Bailey Hockman from Thayer Thomas and NC State has 64 yards on the last two plays. What a block by Ikem Ikwanu, the left tackle out in space. And they told us he was nasty, very physical, just a pure dog at left tackle. And we get a chance to go back and look at this. Number 79 in space. Oh, my goodness. What a block. That's the block that freed up Bailey Hockman to, uh, to basically pave his way to the end zone. Well, you mentioned trust of himself needing to be important tonight for Bailey Hockman. He hits on a 33-yard seam ball. Here's that block. Look at that block. And then he's just going to finish him off. I mean, the big fella out in space. Usually guys, they make big linemen miss and look bad. The question is, was Hockman out of bounds? Was his foot on the sideline? Our rules expert, Matt Austin, is with us tonight. He is in Charlotte in his home. And Matt, as we're looking at this, the call on the field is touchdown. What are you seeing at first glance? Well, with, without a shot right down the, the, the line, I don't know how they can overturn it. It looked like his foot might have been out of bounds, but it certainly didn't look uh, conclusive. And like right, you said, so the call we'll on see. the field is a touchdown, so to overturn it would have to be indisputable. Yeah, you start with the call on the field. That's a good point. Indisputable video evidence to overturn. And here's the call. Review, the ruling on the field stands. There it is. Touchdown stays. 
Bailey Hockman's amped, and so is NC State in 216 into the end zone. We told you about the explosive plays. They've got two of them, two 30-plus yard plays on their opening touch of the football. And Mezzi with a big play down the field on, uh, in the passing game, and then a little trickery. Extra point is good. Miami's got a fight on its hands. Seven nothing, NC State. Pass being legal on the backside, but take us through the block, Andre. Yeah, this block by Ekwanu is what frees it up, and it's against a pretty good player in Bubba Bolton, a safety that leads the, the Hurricanes in tackles. Big guy working in space. Boy, you love to see that, and then all the big grunts over on the sideline talking about it. Well, they've had a good laugh or two. They deserve it every once in a while, right? No I mean, doubt. the big guys, they need it. They need some love in their lives. As De'Ara King comes out for Miami, the redshirt senior quarterback. He is from south of Houston, northwest of Galveston. Manville High School, he was one of eight quarterbacks when he first got there, and he ended up winning himself the starting job. He's a transfer from the University of Houston. He played 34 games, but he said while he watched the national championship game, he wanted to play on that stage. So he trained with his former teammate at Manville, Kyle Trask, the Florida quarterback who's been awesome this year as well. And De'Ara King is the man in charge of the steering wheel for the Miami Hurricanes, who will open with Cameron Harris in the backfield. And King scanning loads at time. He looks for Harris, and he's got him. And Cameron Harris, who's trying to prove something today after his carries dwindled in the last game against Virginia, has six yards. But De'Ara King, you've got to know him in his time at Houston, Andre. Yeah, he, he is a competitive young man, takes care of the football, only 14 interceptions in his entire career. King is undercut. Third down coming up as we say hi to Marty Smith. Good evening, gentlemen. Miami is 5-1, and one, so that means the U is back, right? Pump the brakes, says Hurricanes head coach Manny Diaz. Diaz told me this week that they've had a tendency to look too big picture rather than focusing on the opponent directly before him. And he said, as a result, quote, we've gotten really good at getting our asses kicked. Tonight, they must focus on NC State rather than getting to be 6-1. and one. This is a big play for them early in the ball game to Cameron Harris, and he's very close to the line to gain. But, Marty, people have been saying it year after year. year. It is the U back. They recruit locally. They have a lot of pride here, and they're down 7 nothing early, Andre. Yeah, and I think Cameron Harris is just going to be just shy of the first down marker, so it's a, a decision for Manny Diaz right away. They're going to go oh for it, and he will get it. De'Ara King kept the football, and down the sideline he goes. It's a first down and then some. De'Ara King with a late decision to hang on, and it was the smart one, gain of 44. Yes, he did, because he had a linebacker creeping down. He's actually a safety, Tanner I Engel, creeping down to take away the back. And De'Ara King talked about it this week, about keeping the ball more to help the offensive running game. He said that very early in the week, Andre. I mean, yeah. it's very clear what his game plan is, is take some of this on his own shoulders. And when you talk to Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator for NC State, they wanted to contain the quarterback. They can't allow De'Ara King to run free like that throughout the evening. Donald Cheney Jr., the freshman, with his second straight carry. And he's got to put down a young man from Homestead, Florida, whose carries have been increasing as they will go at least three-headed in the backfield tonight. Yeah, they, they say he's going to be special, knows what to do. He's super talented. And another true freshman, Jalen Knighton, has, uh, has stepped on the scene as well. Once again with Cheney, who's out of Homestead. He was number 42 in the ESPN 300 list coming out of high school. This is where you played a little soft, allowed some big plays if you're NC State, and now you tighten things up. You're hoping just to hold to a field goal attempt here defensively. Harley in motion. 
King's going to roll. He turns it upfield and ends up out of bounds. He's sliding down at about the seven. Flag comes in on the late hit. Peyton Wilson chipped him out of bounds, and it looks like a personal foul coming. After the play, personal foul, necessary roughness, defense, late hit out of bounds, number 11. After the distance of the goal, first down. Sometimes I just don't know about... Yeah, it's a little bit late, but what defenders are supposed to do because King is a runner, obviously, at that point in time, and he's trying to turn the corner. Aiden Wilson's selling out to stop him. That's, that's a tough one, even for an old quarterback. I was going to say, worth noting that this is a quarterback saying that. <laughs> it's like the first time ever a quarterback said, I don't know about a call against a, a quarterback on a hit. Harris back in. King throws, and he's got a touchdown. It's the tight end, Will Mallory, filling in for Brevin Jordan, and Miami responds in kind. All the kid does is catch touchdowns. Every other pass that he's caught pretty much on the average has been a touchdown reception. A sneak him out underneath the handoff, and the timing is perfect. Eight receptions on the year for Mallory. Four of them have gone for touchdowns. Turned him into Chris Carter there. All he does is catch touchdown. touchdown. Ruth Boomer. Jose Borregales for the extra point, which has not been a guarantee on Friday night this year in major spots. 7-7, seven, seven, seven's not good. In less than six minutes on Friday night this week, it took 45 points last Friday between Minnesota and Maryland, and... 7-7 seven, seven. your score as NC State will have it from the 25 yard line but you gotta like the opening drive from Bailey Hockman with confidence the issue and trust of his teammates and himself it was an exceptional opener well you like offense you like this game and it seems to be a track meet early both quarterbacks playing at a high level Hockman in his first drive two for two for 41 yards and De'Eric King a perfect three for three for 15 yards but he had the big uh, fourth down carry that really ignited or helped to keep that drive going but Hockman's up now and it's your serve Big to Bam Knight and Bailey Hockman is dropped Gilbert Frierson who has been outstanding for Miami for that striker position maybe their best defensive player yeah he was recruited as a corner moved to safety and then they dropped him down Kind of in that hybrid position where he's really, really found a home. They go fast on second and 12. It is Knight who's chopped down about four yards shy of the line to gain. Let me tell you, I really had fun just watching the film on this young man. Hard, tough runner and extremely difficult to bring down. Marker comes down. The center, Grant Gibson talking a little smack he's got the first down point going on and it looks like that's going to go against Miami uh, defense number 81 and in the neutral zone causing the offense to react five yard penalty is also the first down that is Jared Harrison Hunt who's playing ahead of Jonathan Ford tonight at the tackle spot got a freebie you love little, those as a little quarterback, hard, yeah, don't you? Yeah, a little hard count. You like them really on first down, where you get a second and five, and then you can let one go. And just, just going up top all the way. So that's the scouting report on me. I get the second and five, or first and five, forget about it. If, if I see you in a backyard football game, I'll, I'll remember that. <laughs> Pressure on Hockman, and he has to unload to the sideline, and this is incomplete. I got a question for you. I want to know what makes a good hard count, Andre. Well, it's it's voice inflection. It's knowing when to do it so the defense doesn't see it coming. Um, you've seen a lot of it across the NFL with, with stadiums that are you know, the crowd doesn't really affect the road team. So it's, it's kind of open season with that. And it's a good tool to have. If you can do it, it, it takes a little bit of practice. It takes some commitment to it. And a lot of guys are shy, and they just kind of go through the cadence. But if you really bark it out, you can get a defensive lineman to jump. After a play, maybe you can blow our audience's ears out. <laughs> Hockman, ready to throw. Pressure coming late. 
and he gets it away. He's got Kerry Angeline across the 40-yard line, the tight end, with a first down on a gain of 24. Yeah, we felt like tight ends would be the story of the evening. Brevin Jordan, we thought he would play. He's out. Mallory is already on the scoreboard. And now Angeline getting himself involved for NC State. Boy, well, that is, he is a fantastic, sure-handed option for Bailey Hockman. He's got 13 catches now. Five have been touchdowns this year. As Brooks in motion. Hockman decisive throw again and he has a Mezzi clanging off the tacklers down to the 15 yard line that was a bullet and he saw it the whole way Hockman did oh, explosive plays 12 yards or more in the passing game and they've had a couple of those already and Mezzi averages 16 yards per reception Damn night through the car wash for a gain of about four. I, I told you at the top we, we would likely see two quarterbacks. Maybe yeah. not if Bailey Hockman keeps doing this. Well, uh, you know who Bam Knight reminds me of? Who's that? Frank Gore. That's who he reminds me of. He is going to play pro football. That's, that's in my opinion, he is going to play on Sundays. Tough, fast enough, and hard to bring down. Well, we saw Frank Gore's cousin earlier, He's Gilbert Frierson. Yeah, he, isn't that amazing? You turn on an NFL game, you're like, Frank Gore is still playing. Hockman feeling the pressure. That's batted in the air, and it is incomplete. Boy, lucky. He had two of those last week against North Carolina that worked. He, he was not as lucky on. Stayed in the air a little bit longer, and a couple of defenders ran under him for interception. So that's just... He can breathe a sigh of relief and continue on, but last week, not so lucky. These are exceptional defensive ends. They both got a hand on the ball there, Roche and Phillips. Third down for Hockman. Pressure coming again to the sideline. Some wow. contact and a great adjustment for the touchdown. Devin Carter with magician's hands. What you love about the catch is he doesn't tip the defensive back to that side. It's just at the last second, and guys practice this all the time, the hands at the end. Don't tip the, the DB and then just stick them out there. Let it fall in. Boy, that's good work. The red zone thread. He beats DJ Ivy to the corner of the end zone. At 6'4", 216, you've got to believe that Carter's an option. Hey, Bailey Hockman's playing some A-level football right now. For NC State, 14-7 Wolfpack. This is an awesome start. The board for the Hurricanes. A brilliant quarterbacking so far from Hockman and from King. As Miami will have it on the return and spinning down is Jalen Knighton, the freshman, across the 25. There is a marker down. We'll see where Miami starts. I'll tell you what, there was a hole there. Knighton saw it, got bumped, just getting through there. Well, it could have been a foot race. Going to return, holding, receiving team, number nine. Ten from the end of the run, Miami. It's going to have to be a long drive for De'Ara King, who transferred from Houston, and it was such a tough decision for him because his family has been through so much. He lost his father in February, not long after the transfer. His mom has been through breast cancer and now in remission. And De'Ara King wanting to lead Miami to an ACC championship. His pass here goes to Mark Pope out of Miami Southridge and it's second down. And he has just been welcomed into this program. The guys follow him. He has a, he's just contagious in terms of his leadership and his leadership skills, he's a workaholic, a gym rat that's always working on his game. He will throw, and he's got Mallory one more time, who's out of bounds close to the sticks, Marty Smith. Jason, Derek King told me this week that it really opened his eyes to a broader world when his father passed away. He said, it made everything in my life clearer because it truly was out of nowhere. It made me see how much bigger life is than football while appreciating the game even more. Every game, every down, every snap. 
it really made me thankful. Marty, thank you for that. Uh, a special young man playing quarterback for Miami with so much in his heart. And his mom watching him play once again as De'Eric King goes down the sideline and some foot contact. It is incomplete. Shaheem battle on the coverage of Pope. Well, iron meeting iron because De'Eric King wants to go deep. NC State told us this week that they thought that was a shortcoming in his game, the deep ball, so they were going to play man-to-man. -man. They were going to see and force the Eric King to beat them playing quarterback from the pocket. He's only put on tape one game where the deep ball was really a major asset, and it was that last game when they eked by Virginia 19-14. Ton of time again. He got it away before the pressure got there, and Harley's dropped to set up a third down. But you look at the deep balls in the first five games compared to that game against Virginia, and it's a major difference, Andre. Yeah, six of 29 for 205. And then last week, that was the first five games of the season. And last week against Virginia, as you mentioned, he was almost perfect six of seven, 187 yards. And that's passes of 20 yards or more. So started out the first five games, were hard searching through the film to find the big plays in the passing game. Timeout called NC State, so Tony Gibson's defense gets a moment to look over what Miami has planned. And we got a big week in college football. A couple of games have been postponed, but the Pac-12 is still underway. Autzen Stadium, one of the great places to watch a football game in college football. 7.30 Eastern time against Stanford and David Shaw. Game dates back to 1900. It is on ABC. It's on the ESPN app as well. And before you watch that game, yeah. you have to yeah. see Andrea Adelson's piece on College Game Day about David Shaw and his brother Eric and his brother's battle with cancer and the bone marrow transplant that David Shaw gave to his brother. Uh, it's an amazing story that Andrea's done. Yeah, I read it last night on ESPN.com, and, and I've always had a great deal of respect for David Shaw, but even more so now, uh, having read that story. It is a tremendous read, and I can't wait to see the piece tomorrow on game day. It'll be on college game day. Andrea will have it as it's third down and seven for Miami, about halfway through this ACC season, and their chances of going to the ACC title game hinge on every game. Blitz coming, incomplete, and a flag comes in. Tony Gibson yeah. said he was going to be aggressive in this game. There it was, and we'll see if King got hit First late. foul, rough the passer. Defense, number 52, 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. It's C.J. Clark. And went a little bit high on Derrick King, but he, Tony Gibson told us on third down, we get to third down, we're going to bring the house. And he is true to his word, just a little bit late in doing so, and really didn't have to. CJ Clark really didn't have to initiate any kind of contact. There wasn't a receiver in the area of where King was going with the football. You like the call, Andre? I do like the call. It's a run into the line. It's the freshman Jalen Knighton. And second down for Miami. And Rhett's going to have Rhett Lashley, the offensive coordinator at Miami. He's going to have to change it up a little bit on first down. All of a sudden, you're getting a lot of bodies around the line of scrimmage in this 3-3-5 look that are playing run defense on first down. Got to mix it up, throw a couple of passes, hitches, whatever it is. But you've got to change up from running on first down. I see the linebackers presenting basically a five-man front as they hit on a quick slant. This is D. Wiggins, and it's third down Miami. And he spread the ball around last week against Virginia. Hartley with 10 catches over 170 or 170 yards, and then Wiggins had three. So what they're going to have to do, keep NC State off balance. King out into the flat and changing direction. Mark Pope for a first down. For Miami right around the 40. There's another receiver that had three catches last week. When you start doing that as a quarterback, then all of a sudden the defensive coordinator, Tony Gibbs, he doesn't know where he's going to be hit. You get everybody in the offense involved. How about that 11 yards per play for NC State? We told you big plays were coming. We didn't know 
that big, that consistently. Came down the middle, wants one of his own, and it's batted away at the last moment. Shaheem Battle got in there. At his first career interception earlier this year against Virginia and just played this one perfectly. Hope got behind him, but the makeup speed and just timed it just right to get his hands on the football. Or a hand on the football, rather. And he's the he's, injured party. He's down. Yep. He told us they battle played three. Was... Malik Dunlap, Shaquem Battle would start the game, and then Cecil Powell is the other corner that will rotate in the game. Gives them a little bit of depth there, but they're hoping certainly that Battle can come back. Look at a season with contact tracing and COVID-19 and unavailable players as Tony Gibson is out there on the field talking to the officials maybe about that personal foul earlier. Yeah. Some teams end up with consolidated injuries in one specific place and NC State has had that at the free safety spot. It has been a, a long, long year at the free safety spot in terms of injuries. As Dave Doran was talking to the officials there uh, and they cannot afford to lose much in terms of uh, secondary, that's for sure. Yeah. Just kind of with injuries on the back end, it's safety really have been been hurt at the safety spot. Cecil Powell is in for battle on second down for Miami in the all-white jerseys tonight. Rush of five down the sideline. It's on target for a touchdown. D. Wiggins. Boy, what you like as a quarterback is to be challenged. And when somebody says that, hey, you can't do this, to go out and prove it on the field. Deep ball has been, you know, less than stellar the first couple of games. And they wanted to challenge Miami. Can There's they play the man to man? Personal foul, rough from the passer. Defense, number 99. The 15 yard penalty is enforced on the kickoff. So do the try. Can they play man to man and hold up? And De'Eric King is taking his shots tonight all you have to do jason is hit on a couple of those you get a couple of one-on-one -on -one matchups and all of a sudden you're going to start seeing a lot of zone coverage because they know you can go over the top and they don't want to give up big plays in a hurry how does that affect the aggressiveness that we expected from tony gibson oh it'll change it it'll it, all of a sudden you're going to see more zone more zone coverage and they'll get out of man to man one more like that and certainly it's going to change Borregales' extra point is good. Daniel Joseph, the man called for the penalty, and we'll look back on the second penalty of the drive on a hit against King. And just he's kind of trying to swat at the ball, and he gets the face mask of King in as he's pass rushing. How about the ball? Outside shoulder, away from the inside defender, the safety. Corner falls down, and there's nobody there. It's so well thrown that nobody is in the vicinity after the corner falls down. You watched a lot of tape on De'Ara King. What didn't go as well on the deep ball in the first five games as compared to the last couple of weeks? I think it's just rhythm and as well uh, time from his offensive line. I don't think he was getting it earlier in the season as the five guys up front have played more and more together. Uh, they've come together as a unit, and now he has the time. As well, experience in the offense, knowing when I'm getting blitzed and how fast to get the ball out and where to go with the football within what we're trying to do offensively has certainly uh, has, has gotten better on his side. It's a quicker offensive line than in the past, and they are playing without John Campbell Jr. He's unavailable tonight, the left tackle, so Zion Nelson checked in as they will try to get an onside kick recovered. Miami has a pile of players there, and let's see. It is Miami football. Wow, Manny Diaz and the Hurricanes play make it, take it in the first quarter. And it looks like Robert Burns comes out of the pile with the football clear recovery by Robert Burns. And this is just so well done. Right off 
one of the NC State players, and Burns is there to recover. A little celebration, and here comes the offense again. That was like when Jordan used to throw the ball off somebody and then claim the inbound pass for himself. Throwback to Eric King. They're going to run the same play that Hockman ran for a touchdown. I mean, how must Miami have felt on that first drive for <laughs> NC State? Like, you're, we're going to run it later, guys. And how about Tyler Baker Williams with a tackle on De'Ara King? Because if he doesn't, we're in a track meet to the end zone. What an open field tackle. One of the things that Tony Gibson told us that they had to do was tackle well in the open field. And Williams, Baker Williams, really saves a touchdown. The down count. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number six, his first, 15-yard penalty, second down. When that hurts, when you have some success on offense and you get some momentum from the onside kick, a little trick play to, to try to break one open, and then you have one of those before the ball's even snapped. Guys in each other's faces, chatting it up a little bit too much. Now you put your team in a bind. I don't think there's a lot of love between NC State and Miami considering some of the body language we've looked at tonight as Mallory is bottled up over on the sideline and tries to pinball around, but he's only going to get about two, and it's third down, and Hillsborough County as a flag comes in. You don't want to take the aggression away, but you got to tame it a little bit. Against Jeremiah Payton, who came into the game for Mark Pope. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 12. The penalty is declined. Third down. Well, we've seen blitz on every just about every third down situation for NC State. You asked me earlier. Would Tony Gibson get out of it? Well, he's been hit a couple of times over the top. I would anticipate that it's coming here to force the ball out. They've just got to make sure that they make tackles. And it doesn't look like, he, like he's going to go blitz here. He's going to play some zone and try to rally up and make a stop. Yeah, they will rush only three and drop into coverage. So it could be King running here. He thinks about loading it up. There's nobody home. And this is dropped by Cameron Harris. A catch there. Could have meant a field goal for Borregales, but instead it's going to be punt time. He looked like he was loading up even against zone to try to try to get one over the top. Instead, it's Lou Headley to punt. Don't forget Stanford, Oregon, Saturday, undefeated Cincinnati. Before that, on ABC against Houston. This is Headley on the roll and the punt. And a fair catch at the 13 with Thayer Thomas. 34-yard punt, 2.02 to go. First quarter at Carter-Finley Stadium, the home of the NC State Wolfpack since the 60s. And look, NC State, it's a rarity under Dave Doran, who's been a very good coach in his eighth year at NC State. They were 4-8 and eight last year, and you got the feeling, talking to the coaches and hearing from players even in the preseason, that that was virtually acceptable. Yeah, I get to, ch get to uh, the opportunity to spend a couple of days with Dave Dor Doran in... Uh, in Georgia at a golf tournament every year. We didn't Obviously, that didn't happen this year, but just a, a winner. He just figures out the good football coach, solid football coach, believes in the physical part of it, and his teams are built from the inside out, big, strong offensive linemen and defensive linemen, and then there he'll surround them with, obviously, talented skill position players, but he just really has a, a good pulse on what this NC State football program really needs. One of the architects of Northern Illinois' success in recent memory as this run from Ricky Person Jr. makes it about third down and ten for Miami. And Andre, we talked about these talented defensive ends for the Hurricanes. Roche was involved on the first play. Jalen Phillips, the UCLA transfer on the other side. They're both transfers. Yeah. They're both high-level players. Uh, I think next-level players. A great size, great explosion off the ball. Roche's one of the leaders on this team. 
excellent pass rusher after he transferred in from, from Temple. Where is the pressure coming from? Looks like the top of the formation is going to bring some heat. And they do rush a couple of linebackers. Hockman gets out of it, wants to throw, loads up down the field. And this is batted away, incomplete, intended for Thayer Thomas with Amari Carter roving. That takes some courage because you know as you set your feet, you're already trying to outrun a guy. And then you set your feet to throw deep, you know you're going to get hit. Nice recovery by Carter on the back end because Thomas was behind him in coverage. Excuse me, on his route. And of course, a punt. And you see this Miami offense again. All Hockman didn't do there for that to be backyard football was yell 500 before he threw the ball. <laughs> now he's waving the receivers further down the field. <laughs> punt for Trenton Gill. And Gervin Hall driven all the way back to the 35-yard line. That's where Miami will set up. So there are punters in this football game, we've recently found out. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, all states will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, all state. Andre, we got some really talented tight ends in this game. Brevin Jordan is oh, out yeah. for Miami, but we've seen Mallory score. Terry Angeline with a big catch early on for NC State. Best tight end you ever played with was who? Ooh we boy. Hey, give me a minute to think because you know in college they didn't exist. And my first year in the NFL, we didn't have one. King on target there for a first down grab for Wiggins, who's got a touchdown already. He's got 25 yeah, he seconds. Loved, you love guys like Mallory though, but they play almost like a wide receiver because of the catch radius. King on the roll. He is pressured, and he unloads incomplete. That was C.J. Clark bearing down on him. Miami at 5-1. and one. A game back in the loss column of both Notre Dame and Clemson, who happened to meet in South Bend this weekend. So a huge game for Miami in the ACC standings as they will go out of the backfield for Cheney Jr., and he is wrapped up by Joseph. So both guys with a personal foul on the previous drive have made plays. We thank you for joining us in a huge game for the Hurricanes tonight on a third down and nine for De'Eric King. Harris got him a block to free him up for a throw to the sideline. And a flag comes in on the contact. Harris against Harley will check the marker. And it's one thing to scheme it up. It's another to actually play Passing it and execute. Defense, number six, 15-yard penalty. I'm on it. First down. We've had roughing the passer penalties on third down and then now interference on the back end by Harris that's going to give Miami a fresh set of downs. And he didn't need to. I mean, the ball was flying out of bounds. Well, actually, the receiver's trying to slow down to keep himself inbounds and just ran right up his back. Harris jostled and no gain. Uh, penalties have been an issue at points this year, about 80 penalty yards a game. For NC State, and this one prolongs a drive for the Hurricane. You take first downs any way you can get them. If you're gifted, that makes them all the more better, and you're allowed to keep playing. A lot of pre snap motion tonight, and King with the throw. To Harley to set up third down. Robert Keys, the athletic, had a very nice piece about pre snap motion in the NFL this year and how much more we've seen on Sunday. We've seen a lot of it in this game. Well, Harris has got to watch himself. He was ejected for targeting versus Duke and was a little late to arrive in that previous play. Oh, there is King slicing through and out of bounds at the 20 yard line. First down, Miami. And you see Harris again. So that's three plays in a row in which the ball has found its way 
to the third level of the NC State defense. Which tells Tell you, you what, that big plays are starting to happen. Injury is Isaiah Moore. More on that play and on Moore's condition when we come back. Hurricane, the Houston transfer, playing very well this year. Miami's only loss to the Clemson Tigers, who are one of two unbeatens left in the ACC. But the top two go to the ACC championship game. And Miami trying to pick up a game on somebody with a win tonight. King launches on first down and drops it into the corner beautifully. Mike Harley at the edge of the end zone. Brilliance. Up the stairs he goes. What a throw. That dropped out of the sky like one of Russell Wilson's passes. That you watch him launch in situations like this. Excellent air under the football, away from the defender. And you're just throwing it to the back pylon, trying to land it in between the pylon and the receiver, and what a throw. That's just that's just perfect. Perfect execution. Thought he was gonna do the Bo Jackson with stairs and just run out of the arena. <laughs> Mike Harley, who was a West Virginia commit and spent some time at WVU while Tony Gibson, NC State's defensive coordinator, was there, so they're very familiar with each other. And Harley gets a win there as De'Eric King has three touchdowns and four incompletions this Friday night, Andre. He is playing at a high level. He has been challenged because he's seeing a lot of man-to-man, -man, and they are challenging him to throw the deep ball because of that graphic we showed earlier where he was 6 of 29 in the first five games of passes 20 yards or more. They wanted to challenge him, and he has more than met the challenge tonight. Is all without tight end Brevin Jordan. His left tackle, John Campbell Jr., is out. A couple other receivers, Xavier Restrepo, Michael Redding, the third unavailable. So the two deep had a lot of red ink on it tonight for Miami, which has dealt with COVID-19 issues during the bye week. But the Hurricanes had enough to play today, and they've got 21 points in less than 17 minutes. So no onside kick this time. And NC State will have it at the 25 for Bailey Hockman, our hardest working player brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. He's done it all almost literally tonight. He has, he's had a couple of runs with this one. A, a, a reception on a throwback, great blocks out in front and the rest was finished up by Bailey Hockman. He's been excellent in the passing game placement with the football the accuracy has been there and now it's his turn to to go try and tie this thing back up for his football team first and ten for 25 Ackman drops it down for Angeline and he's got 10 on a first down grab we we're talking about Hockman's high school career, coached by his dad, but over 9,000 passing yards and 94 touchdowns, so familiar with a passing game. Whole family uh, has football running through its genealogy. Grandfather Ken is an Ohio high school coaching Hall of Famer. He passed down the family business to Bailey's dad, Kyle, you're talking about, and now Bailey at his second ACC school. Hockman on the roll. Hockman across his body. Hockman's got a first down past the 50. It's Porter Rooks, the freshman out of Charlotte. And you start to see what Tim Beck talked to us about, the confidence, the trust. When he's playing that way, he's as good as anybody. It's when you, you get in his head a little bit as a defense, maybe force him to get off his throwing point a little bit. Ooh, that one was a wide-open touchdown possible. Instead, he overshot his mark at Amezi. Amezi does a nice job of the release, getting right back outside. Keep himself away from the safety, and that one's 
That's a tough throw because it's got to be there before the safety arrives off the hash mark. So what's he got to do differently to put that on target? Well, just a little, just the footwork, just a little bit more up the field uh, with the delivery. And take just a tad bit off. Ackman sees it right in his face and has to discard the football before the ambush begins. It was Harrison Hunt who was right in his kisser, and it's third down. Tell you what, they had the exact, the proper play called. If the offensive line, they're able to get their heads up and hands on a defender to just give him a split second more to throw that screen pass to Bam Knight, it's see you later, goodbye. Because there is nobody behind the defense as Miami was selling out with a screen pass call. Ryerson looked like he was going to run through the line and put on the brakes real hard. Rita snap it. Third down. Got a hurry here. And they're not going to get it off. That's a delay of game. Hey, Unless they got a Dave, timeout first. Yeah, uh, Dave Duran may have called Ooh, a timeout. And a flag's going to come in on the post play action. And Quincy Roche might catch a flag here. They have been Nesta Jade Silvera, big guy wearing number one with the extra stuff in the middle of the formation. The question is, will they say that it was dueling fouls or will they have just one team here? And it's a huge call. It's a third down and long. There was a whistle before the snap, and we'll see if a timeout happened or it was delay of game. So we could have two fouls on the play. Dead ball, personal foul, defense number two, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Yeah, Roche catches the personal foul. And it was a timeout, NC State. So no delay of game. The Wolfpack will get 15 yards out of it, and a massive penalty prolongs the drive. And here for Miami, a personal foul against Quincy Roche. Watch here. We'll bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin. Watch Gibson the center. Matt, what do you think of the foul against Roche here? Well, I don't think the officials are going to like their call after they see it. The NC State player sits on the other player. I don't know what he's doing, taunting, whatever. He's not getting up. The guy just pushes him to get off the pile. So I don't like the call at all. It should have been no call or it should have gone both ways. Thanks, Matt. Instead, it ends up with NC State and a first down. And Bam Knight gets him another one on a gain of 11. And Bam Knight comes right back. After NC State gets picks up the first down with a dynamic run, well, he is a he's a special player. All-time leading rusher at Southern Nash High School, same school as Julius Peppers. As Hockman throws another short pass, and a nice job defensively by Frierson there on the catch by Person, second and nine. It's a great play by Frierson. And you see Person in there with a with a nice reception, but Frierson in the open field. And he's had a couple tonight where he's been just one on one and he's made the play, and, and that's all you're asked to do. It seems like that's what he's you know he should be doing. It's not that easy all the time. Hockman design run off the motion, and he's not going to get much of anything. It's third down coming up as Sam Brooks Jr. and Amari Carter got in there. Third down for NC State. See how Blake Baker, the defensive coordinator for Miami, chooses to play here. He and Manny Diaz, known for their aggressive defenses, some speed, and they feel really good about the corners, Blade and Ivy. Blades and Ivy. They may dial up a little pressure here on third and medium. Safety over the top. You got a guy on the slot that might come. Ryerson again. Dancing in the line. And he will rush. Hockman is sacked. He's dropped. Jalen Phillips, the UCLA transfer. 
And a really good looking athlete, 6'5", 266. You talk about the two ends, he's able to come inside of a nice little game with a defensive tackle, goes out, he comes underneath, and he's able to get himself home. Just enough eyeballs on the out on the edges where he's able to make his way to the quarterback. He's at 42 yards now for Christopher Dunn off the loss of six in Miami. Antsy at the line all night long, does get back, and Dunn shoots it on through. So one of the leading scorers in NC State history in the top 10 with now 253 career points. Makes it a four-point game in the first half. Take you from plan to play. It's brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. And Derek King challenging Miami his defense to D. Wiggins for one of his touchdown passes. And he comes back on a corner route that's perfectly thrown to Hartley. Tell you what, they are planning and they are playing. Yeah, uh, points galore so far, 38 total points. We've seen the receivers now get into the picture here after a lot of tight end work early on. Did you, did you ever think of your favorite tight end yeah. to throw to, by the yeah. way? Yeah, Rodney Holman, who came over for after a long career with the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, I think he had 25 or so receptions. I, I looked at, at the stats, but he was he was just a, a good veteran teammate to uh, to have around. Had a fine, fine career. It's amazing how the tight end position has changed over the course of time as this return will come from the end zone and it's Jalen Knighton with a flag down. He's across the 30-yard line and we'll check the marker on the return from Miami. Hey guys, a flag, a flag. A legal block in the back, number 39. Do the return, a legal block in the back. Receiving team number 39, 10-yard penalty. Well, sorry, half the distance to the goal, first down. I like when we get the sneak peek from the official with his mic on. Tell you what, That's NC State, the movie. I know they went down and kicked the field goal, but it just seems like right now all the momentum, all the juice uh, is on the sideline with the guys with the white jerseys. And last couple of possessions, uh, they've been pretty, been pretty special. You've got a hot quarterback in De'Ara King who you, you've decided as, as NC State has decided to challenge. He's answered the call. And now he's got you basically wondering how to play him. You saw Rhett Lashley, the offensive coordinator, who has done a fine job with De'Ara King with a new offensive staff in Miami. As King throws a line drive to Mallory and a flag comes in. And we'll check that marker. Brett Lashley is an unhappy camper right now. But he is a oh, good football offense, coach. Number 53, because the crime, second down. And I, I'm really surprised, Jason, that that he hasn't become a head coach yet in, in college football. He is buttoned up. He's got a plan. He is, his offenses are, you want him to throw it around? Let's go back to the tapes when he was at, LA, at uh, SMU last year. You want to mix? That's what they're doing at Miami right now. Just a good, solid football coach that eventually will be a head coach. His quarterback, De'Eric King, down the edge of the field, and it's knocked away incomplete. Malik Dunlap on the coverage, and another flag is in. Now that's one of the, the three things that can happen when you go deep. And sooner or later, you keep challenging. And Defense number 24. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. And Matt Austin, Dunlap, our rules gets, expert, is he just gets here, there Matt. a little early. That, that's basically a tackle. Down and created a one-arm catch, so, or one-arm attempt, so that was definitely pass interference. Easy call there, 63 penalty yards against NC State already tonight with 9.15 to go in the second quarter. King with the fake, and he throws down the middle. He's got Mallory again. It's a first down. Ball came out late, but he had already put it away, and he was down at the 48. 
Boy, you talk about operating at a high level. De'Eric King is doing that tonight. Spreading the ball around the edges. When he's given one-on-one -on -one situations, he's attacked them uh, with confidence. And then when he needs to, to work underneath to the tight ends, or to the tight end, Will Mallory, he's been able to throw that one with, uh, with accuracy as well. What a night he's having. Savion Jackson for NC State didn't know whether or not he was supposed to be on the field, and it turns out okay for Tony Gibson's defense, but there was an emergency there for the moment on the one-yard gain from Knight. You're talking about Rhett Lashley. He's also got uh, he's got probability on his side, the offensive coordinator for Miami. Got a couple last couple of years, all under Rhett Lashley, and talking to Manny Diaz, he feels like they're at a point where they're growing more and more and they're getting closer to doing that thing where they finish each other's sentences and have a good cohesion for what they have in all of their minds as they'll set up a second down and nine for De'Eric King here. And King takes it outside for a first down and then some. But wait, there's more. Another flag. No laundry on the field. It couldn't have been executed any better. Just set it up nicely, allowing... The outside edge players up the field. King comes in underneath, and this may be, may be a oh, hole. Oh, oh. Offense, number 53. Senior penalty, second down. Second penalty on Ja'Kai Clark, the left guard. And just, they invite Peyton Wilson right up the field, and King pulls it at the right time. And all for naught. We're going to have first and 20 here. Excuse me, second and 19. Tony Gibson talked about getting his defensive ends to rush to De'Eric King's level and not yeah. beyond, not get too far upfield. And that time the hold is what sprung him. Second down, 19. Harris again, a very strong block. His guy comes back and makes the tackle. But Cameron Harris was talking about his playing time and frustration with it. He has blocked very well tonight for Miami. And you got to believe that's going to get him more run. No doubt about it. And you want the unselfish things from players where you're blocking all the dirty work that you, you don't see, the normal eye doesn't see, but the coaching staff, when they go back and evaluate the film, they see that type of effort. And it's rewarding with playing time and carries. See how aggressive NC State is here, third and 11. I think they want to come again now. You see guys creeping up. Remember, they start in just a three-man front, all snaps. King is driven back. It was a wall of black jerseys, including Savion Jackson, fourth down. Yeah, they play zone coverage with their 3-3-5 three, three, look to just kind of keep eyes on De'Aaron King. And they told us... Tony Gibson told us that one of the spies would be Peyton Wilson, and they would also use uh, Drake Thomas and, and Isaiah Moore in different situations. Headley on the roll and the punt for Miami, and this goes into the end zone. Coming up this week, Sunday NFL Countdown, all access with DK Metcalf. DK, he was on Twitter saying, my name is DK Metcalf. Thank you very much. Plus, Patrick Mahomes wired for sound. Kickoff Sunday NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN. And then Cam Newton and the Patriots off that loss to the Bills a couple of weeks ago. They will take on Sam Darnold and the Jets. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. Monday night countdown at 6 o'clock going on this weekend in the NFL with Marty Smith, Andre Ware, Jason Benetti, along with you. Carter Finley Stadium is the site and a first down for NC State and Bailey Hockman giving ground to throw and it's incomplete. Second down. And a flag comes in again. I'm just going to tell you when there's not a flag and we'll go from there. <laughs> it seems to be the case, doesn't it? There's a tremendous amount of you know flags being thrown here and as we try to get deeper into the second quarter the preliminary signal of a hold from the side guy 
if I've gotten good enough at charades here in week number 11. Pass the defense, defense number seven. Nope. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. On go Al Blades Jr. Yeah, NC State got to go back to a more aggressive style where they're attacking Miami like they did in the first couple of drives of this game. You start to dictate the pace, then speed up your tempo. That's when they're, they're really operating at a very high level. Miami's brought some heat on Hockman, and this run on first down is Person. Down the sideline, still tight roping. Person inside the 35. Oh, goodness, what a job on the perimeter to stay in bounds at the edge of the cliff. It's a gain of 38 as Bolden missed a tackle. The explosive plays come in many ways for this NC State offense. The passing game and certainly Person and Knight can bring it in the running game. Person who played for... Dwayne Washington and Torrey Holt, among others, in high school. Heritage High out of nearby Wake Forest, North Carolina. Hockman climbing the pocket. Hockman rolling out, turns his body as a left-hander and gets it off to the sideline for a grab for C.J. Riley back from injury. It's the flick of the wrist. Well, he's moving right. That's not his strong side, but he's got to figure out how to whip his hips around and make that throw and it's just a nice flip of the hips and a flick of the wrist and it's thrown accurately and on the money another marker and everybody blames everybody else <laughs> so i think it's to be on nc state little movement up front offense number 54 five yard penalty second down on dylan mcmahon that's the combined 13th accepted penalty in the first 24 minutes and then some and they could have picked one of three guys along the offensive line in that situation Hockman on the delay this is Bam Knight Matt Austin our rules expert when you're in a situation like this where there are a lot of penalties going on as an official do you start thinking maybe we shouldn't call everything how do you deal with that no you just you call what you see uh, a lot of some games you have a lot of fouls some games you don't have hardly in at all so keep doing what you're doing keep officiating the play not the official's fault that there's a penalty on every play is the answer third down and four from bailey hockman Design roll, Hockman to his strong side has the first down for Thayer Thomas, the grad student. And walked on to start his career and earned a scholarship in 2018. We really, really like this young man. Excellent route runner, and I think, I think you got a chance to really see it and see his work on that last play. Well, he had a couple touchdown throws last year. He had the pass to Hockman tonight. He was a 33rd round draft pick of the Red Sox. Just last year, he has baseball history in his blood. As it's first down and a run for NC State, our former colleague Alex Cora back managing the Red Sox as of today in the Major League Baseball Friday news dump. How about this drive that NC State's put together? I mean... Yeah, they, they stalled for a little bit, a couple of punts, and here they come again. You know, attacking, big, explosive plays. And I think Hockman's getting ready to see a blitz here by the Hurricanes, trying to adjust things to protect himself where the blitz is coming from field side. And one-on-one -on -one down at the bottom. He changed into a run. So I want to go through his mind there. He decided on run. What's he seeing at the line? Maybe he thought that the blitzer was so wide that he was, he'd be able to slip Knight underneath. And if the offensive line did its job, it'd just give him a crease of daylight, he'd be off and into the end zone because there, there wasn't a third-level player there. Like he did almost have that crease as it's third and four for NC State. Hockman to throw. Hockman down the middle. Touchdown. It's Angeline, the tight end. There is a flag down on the play. We'll check the marker. 
There's no foul for Ruffin to pass through. He's over the play as a touchdown. That's his sixth touchdown reception. And, and you talk about attacking the weakness of a defense. Two safeties, the middle of the field is the weak part of, of that coverage. And once Angeline got himself behind the secondary player, it could have been a nickel, the ball was already in the air. So you don't really even have a chance as a defender to make a break on the football. Just well-timed and well-executed. 24-21, late second quarter. Cell phone repair. Did you know Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need? Just get a Find Thomas to pick up the first down, and then this one. Great read, anticipation of the throw. The touchdown pass to Angeline to cap off a fantastic drive for NC State. On the approach from the 25, Harley across the 30-yard line. As we go into the studio, our good pal Matt Perry. Yeah, but Eddie, what a half you guys have going out up there. Coming up at our halftime, there's some news out of the Pac-12 today. You've got Utah and Arizona joining Cal and Washington as games canceled a week one for the Pac-12. Plus, at our half, we're going to discuss Clemson and Notre Dame, the keys to that one. Plus, Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway. The virtual locks. Big bounce back week for them, Benetti. They, ha they haven't been picking winners, so they're going to have to bounce back and make America money like they've done in the past. We'll see you guys coming up in just a couple of minutes. Well, you Love started it when locks. you were talking smack about Syracuse. That's why they're virtual, because <laughs> you don't always get them right. <laughs> uh, look forward to that at halftime. Some big games coming up over the weekend. Stanford and Oregon, ABC primetime. Undefeated Cincinnati will have next Friday as this is Harley down the sideline and Mike Harley with another big grab and soft hands just outside the 40. Another excellent read by Derek King and the throw was perfect to Harley. The chemistry between Harley and King the last couple of weeks has been fantastic. Right at the line, this is Wiggins on the sideline. We were talking to Rhett Lashley about the Eric King and Rhett Lashley's seen a lot of great quarterbacks in his time coming through Auburn etc and he said there are a couple traits that I would take if I were building a bionic quarterback out of all my guys and the Eric King and his consistency and his work ethic would be that King looked left now goes right and that's dropped incomplete for Mark Pope gotta have it that's what I'd tell him coming back to the huddle. Hey, we're on a roll. We got to catch those. Got to have it. And King playing with superior confidence right now. Sitting in the pocket, reading things out. And that ball was about as well thrown. Hitting Pope but right in the middle of that six on the front of his jersey. Down. Usually you see pressure from NC State. We're going to play a little zone here. They drop back. Rush three. King hit the middle and it's incomplete. Harris dislodged it from Wiggins and it's fourth down. Played the most snaps of anybody on NC State's defense. Just a sophomore and that's after being ejected in the Duke game and having to sit out a half. But... He has made his presence felt in this one because if he doesn't arrive at the proper time, that ball is going to be a completion and another Miami first down. They're going to go ahead and punt it here. Well, I, I think you can argue to go for it, but I see the had point. You, had you gotten something on third down, maybe. Headley on the punt to Thayer Thomas, and this won't go near him. Miami... Wow. We're down it at the one yard line. See, that's why you punt, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly uh -huh. why you punt it. You know that's going to happen. Tell you what, this is perfect. You get guys down there facing back towards the punter. And I mean, that's that's about as close as you want it as a coach right there. Perfect. Yeah, it took. The Corey Couch might as well have had a couch at the one yard line. He had time to sit back there and wait for the ball to bounce to him. 
And so now NC State one timeout, a buck 49. They've got to try something because Miami's got three timeouts and could get the ball back here. Yeah, yeah this is what I would try it here if I'm if I'm NC State and Tim Beck, I'd throw the football. Ooh, You've got an ex a, an experienced quarterback in in Ackman. I would just one, two, three, and let it rip. Give me Emezi on the outside, Thomas, uh, Angeline up the seam, and I would just let one rip. Maybe you get an interference call, maybe you get a holding call, but I would try. And, and he's experienced enough. Don't hold the football. Let it go. See what they do on second down. They give him two yards as Miami calls its first time out of the first half, and we'll show you what the slate is in the ACC across the conference coming up tomorrow some huge games obviously Clemson Notre Dame at night some question about Kenny Pickett and his health for Pat Narduzzi in Pittsburgh Liberty is ranked out of Lynchburg Virginia Don't sleep on Liberty and Hugh Freeze no. I mean look they got some mobile quarterbacks they've got guys who obviously can beat Syracuse at the Carrier Dome I, that's gonna yeah. be a fun one Nooney a good one to watch and obviously Clemson and Notre Dame That'll be a good one to round out the day. Tim Beck has been all over the place. He's been in Austin. He's been at Ohio State. He's a well-traveled coordinator who started his career as a high school coach in the Miami area. And they get movement at the line. Let's see. Jalen Phillips got, jumped. Was he drawn? They've gotten Phillips to, to move, move over and get in the neutral zone. Offside. Defense yep. number 15. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's Miami's eighth penalty of the night, and we still have a second half to go. I mean, that one now gives NC State a little hope of a drive. I mean, before it was played keep away from Miami, who's going to get the ball after halftime now with all those and penalties, and that one especially second and three different call. It is a run. And it's not going to get much of anything for person. And they were trying to steal a possession. That's why Manny Diaz is, is you know, burning timeouts here. And he thought it, it, the plan had just about blown up with that offsides penalty, but they're able to rally up and and hold NC State to no gain. So it's right back on schedule. You get the ball with some time, and maybe you're thinking field goal. If you get lucky, uh, you get the whole whole Sunday. With the cheers. What's that? The whole Sunday with the chair. You get the, oh, the well, touchdown. With the chair. I, I thought you said pull up a chair, and I was going to say I will for Stanford, Oregon <laughs> tomorrow night. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you have to have the cherry on top of the Sunday, right? No doubt. No doubt. All right, third and two. 138 left, deep in your own territory. As a quarterback, what do you want the call to be here? Uh, obviously, I, I would have been throwing to start this drive, but here you're going to be a little, little cautious with it. It's a toss to Rooks, the wide receiver, and Porter Rooks does have an NC State first down, and now we'll now, see how Beck and the offense want to play it. Now, if I'm Dave Doran and Tim Beck, I want to speed it up a little bit. I got myself out of out of harm's way. We got a first down. It looks like they may just be satisfied going to the locker room up three and. I think I say this every week. You cannot score enough points in the first half of a football game. So I get trying to be cautious and not turn it over down here, but you've got an experienced quarterback and experienced players around him. You should have your foot on the gas a little bit. Yeah, and with the conversation about Bailey Hockman trusting his teammates and himself, you have to reciprocate when he's played like this no in the doubt. first half. Trust him. Person steps out of a tackle and finds his way to the sideline. Now, fate is giving NC State every indication that they should maybe turn it up. He gets out of bounds. 53 seconds. Clock stops. Yep. Perfect situation. And a lot of time, you've got a timeout in your back pocket. If you hit one deep over the middle, every, you know, every blade of grass is, is open to you right now. All corners of the field. And you got a bonus down where you get to second and short. As you mentioned, all indicators point. Press the gas. It's 
especially with Miami getting the ball at a halftime. They will run on second and two. And McLeod with the tackle. They're going to let it roll. Yeah. Just want to get to the locker room. Now, who's going to use the timeout here? I mean, Miami's got one left. They I think it's to Miami. Play. I think it's Miami. Manny Diaz taking his final timeout. Come out, Miami. The third and final timeout. And what you don't, what you do is you give the other guy a chance with a timeout and with it being third down and one. They just get it back with any time left. Coaches Andre are kind of flirting with seconds. giving an opening to the other. Well, I guess it's my aggressive nature in the first half. Is, you know, let's not regret a possession later. Danny Diaz, who started his coaching career, full-time coaching career at NC State, the legendary Chuck Amato, and those Chuck Amato teams would really get after you for NC State. Young Manny Diaz, 2000 to 2005. You make a flip book of any coach, and it's it's like the president flip book, right? You, just, you see the age starting to develop. But Manny Diaz is a fun guy to talk to. Big I don't know. He fan, looks a lot, it just almost the same as that picture. He just got, he's got a little more stubble. He's got some age in the facial hair yeah. now. As they do get a first down. down here. Now if you want to get to the locker room, you just kneel kneel it down and and get there in one play. Watch Jalen Phillips on this play. See if you like what you see. The one guy you don't want to mess around with is 79. There's one who... That is one mean dude. Well, no flag came in. Matt Austin, you were looking at that replay. Do you see any reason for a personal foul on the dive-in by Jalen Phillips at all? I, I really don't. He goes on top of the player. Looks like he's trying to jab the ball out. I don't think it was any kind of a punch or a slap or anything like that. So I would just get in there and talk to the players. Play on, there it was. Matt Austin, our rules expert, joining us all night long on Friday night once again this week. And we're going to check with the officials who are having a post-play contact. Please reset the game clock to 36 seconds. Set the play clock to 40 seconds. There's some people at home saying this week hasn't 40 been long on enough the play yet. Clock. 36 on the game clock. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. On a lot we of go, we go to 36 seconds. <laughs> and now we'll run the clock back down. So, with the play clock at 40 and the game clock at 36, those extra 10 seconds will just be an opportunity yeah, for you to watch to a little bit more room. football. Go ahead and walk in. Well, an exceptional offensive first half. Both quarterbacks are slinging it, Andre. Yeah, I mean, you know, near perfect from both guys, and, and I think both are meeting the challenges that uh, they're facing defensively, and, and also the pressure of having to match the other guy's performance and lead your team down the field for points. Great first half in terms of quarterback play. 545 total yards in 30 minutes, 24 
That's beautiful. <laughs> we got a lot of football left. De'Eric King on the throw. He's got Wiggins on the screen to the 30-yard line. And it'll be second down. Uh, you, you know, you have to appreciate Trenton Gill, though. He said, come on, bring it. Doors open. Let's go. He brought it all right. <laughs> oh, boy. See if Mr. King can get his football team back, back in this thing. Second down, seven. King turns it up field and throws. There's a marker down, and this is going to be just shy of the catch from Pope if it stands. And that's usually an indicator of holding. And it's a tough enough job already. Holding. Offense, number 23. Senior penalty. Second down. Well, Cameron, well, Harris, Harris, Cameron to... Harris on a strong blocking night. That time he held. Yeah, and just trying to protect his quarterback. And... Gets, gets caught holding. And now you wonder how Tony Gibson is thinking as a, a play caller for NC State's defense. Do they bring some pressure here? It looks like they're going to play some zone, try to keep everything in front of them. And then on third down, if you're able to rally and keep Miami short, that's when you force the ball out of De'Eric King's hands a little bit faster than he wants. Miami's been third and long a lot this season. He had Mallory in the slot. He goes the other direction over the middle, and he's got Wiggins one more time, so they get about 15 of them. And they get it right back to third and short. And now you got all the options, and it's the advantage of the offense here. Ball's on the deck. King's after it, and he does dive on top of it. Does he end up with it is the question. And it looks like the answer is yes. He was fighting with Peyton Wilson, who had a crack at it. Well, you see the mesh point there. King wanted to keep it. He could see that the uh, outside linebacker by Jones pinching down inside on the run. And he wants to pull it out, but Harris wants to keep it. And then the ball's on the ground, but... Had De'Eric King been able to pull that one, we might still be talking about a, a long touchdown run. It's nearly also the first turnover of the ball game as Thayer Thomas has not had much of a chance in the return game as Headley puts it down at the 27-yard line. So NC State will have it up seven, 225 to go in the third in Raleigh. And we have had some tremendous white knuckle football games on Friday night. Just some great stuff the last couple weeks. Minnesota, Maryland, Miami, NC State, and now Stanford, Oregon. We get our first look at the Pac-12. Yes, a couple games postponed, canceled, but Stanford, Oregon still underway tomorrow night at Autzen Stadium. Good to have the Pac-12 back. Yeah, it really is. And we'll play early. They'll be on. They'll be suited up and ready to go early this weekend. Hockman. Drops it in beautifully. The freshman Porter Rooks out of Charlotte. First down, NC State. Tell you what, Hockman looks like an experienced vet. A sixth career start tonight. He looks like he's played a lot more football than that. He's been you know, precise in how he reads the defense, and the ball's coming out. Just playing with a, a ton of confidence right now. Another run. This is person. You saw his picture down at the bottom of the screen. That was the cleanly shaven Bailey Hockman. He's showing the veteran years. He's got the facial hair. He's got the long hair coming out of the helmet as well. He looks like a bassist now. Bailey Hockman does. Like you should you go on tour all the, with an amp. Yeah, you mentioned all the football he's, that's in his family. His dad actually started his playing career at NC State and then before transferring. They went to Bowling Green to play some action back in the day but Bailey Hockman has a third down and not uh, third down and uh, medium here with a buck 24 to go third and four this might be go for a territory if they don't get it third down here Andre yeah I, I actually think it is when you're cooking like they are and you're past the 50 yard line you need to possess the football I think you're right. Person on the catch and a first down for NC State. 
Slipped out by Blades Jr., but a first down Wolfpack under a minute in the third. Oh, seven of, of nine in third down conversions for NC State. Hockman stands tall and nearly intercepted. Blades got a hand on it, which allowed Bolden then to clean out the receiver in its second down. I think he just short arm this one. He's trying to put so much touch on it to C.J. Riley that he just leaves it a little bit short, and that's in the area of the playmaker, Al Blades. Usually he's going to come down with those. Two, two interceptions to his credit already this season. Had a couple of them last year as well after playing mostly special teams two years ago. Hockman changed the play and they're going to have to use a timeout. Now, in a close game like this, that timeout may arm them a little bit later. We'll see. What telltale markers are you looking for on the ear? Oh, you just go back and take a good look at that picture. It, it'll tell you <laughs> all you need to know. <laughs> Second down for NC State. Under a minute, third quarter. They will screen it, and it's tipped and incomplete. So, Jalen Phillips again, the UCLA transfer, got a hand up. He is some player. Extremely athletic, practices hard, and plays hard every single down. Just loves the game and brings tremendous energy every single day to their program. That dude had 21 sacks as a high school senior in the state of California. Crazy. Crazy. That's really good football out west. On third down, it's a draw. And NC State will get about five yards on the run for person. So now, Andre, you going field goal or are you going for it on fourth down and five? I'm going to go field goal. Christopher Dunn has been pretty good this year. Very accurate. They get his range is about 55 and in. Dave Doran told us yesterday so they're confident in this uh from this yardage for him i say line up for it don't kick it when we come back in the fourth quarter and go for it try and put the game away <laughs> 38 31. Yeah. i'm with plus more zone duke world with the music nc state Trying to go up two scores. It's a field goal attempt for Christopher Dunn. It's from just short of 50 yards at 48, and Miami had some movement at the line. Now wow. it's fourth and five. It would be very close to a first down. It was Blades who jumped. Might give him the first down, and it might, even if it's not the first down, may have Coach Gore oh, and think about. Oh, offense number 45. Yeah. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Oh, wow. They get NC State instead, so now it's 53 for Dunn. You like the call, Matt? Matt Austin? Uh, no, if, if number seven crosses into the neutral zone, then number 45 is a threatened player, and he is he can react. So, from what I see, that should have been put on the defense. Wow. I agree totally with you, Matt. He causes him to move, and... Instead, it's done from 53. It could have been a first down for NC State. Dunn drives it toward the uprights, and it is good! Love the celebration. Love it. Love it. I mean, High level no kicker doubt. energy right there. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it, it gets up and plenty long enough. You just wondered if it was going to be high enough, but it had plenty of distance. And NC State up by two scores now. 
like he might take off from RDU down the road. Dunn puts NC State up 10. Number four, changes his jersey to 46. Junior out of Lexington, Miami. home of famed barbecue four, in North Carolina, and Miami. Dunn gives NC State a 10-point lead against Miami, number 11 in the country as of this week, and trying to stay in the ACC title game race. But a loss here would be massively damaging to De'Ara King, who said he wanted to play at Miami, he wanted to transfer because he wanted to play on a stage like Joe Burrow got to last year in the national championship game. There's been nothing wrong with his play. Yeah, he's just got to go ahead and and elevate everybody else's play around him and then have the defense play a little bit of complimentary football, get the special teams involved as well. They've given up a, 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 a return for a touchdown. Otherwise, uh, you, you race that, which you, you obviously can't, but they're, they're, they're going to score to take the lead in this game. Well, look, Miami fans are probably sick of hearing about it, but off a of bye week under Manny Diaz, Miami is 0-4 so far. That's the situation here. De'Ara King on the design run, and that's not going anywhere. Isaiah Moore has been very active, the redshirt junior out of the state of Virginia. Right in the center of that defense, tremendous size at 6'2", about 245, good lateral movement. He's a quarterback of their defense. Gets everybody lined up, and he runs the show in the middle. Little sidestep from Cameron Harris, and Harris is sent out of bounds to set up a third down and short by Peyton Wilson. Exactly where you want to be if you're Miami. Third down and short. And Oregon, as Miami has a third down and one, trying to stay in the race for the ACC title game, and they would be with a loss, but it would really damage their chances as Harris has a first down for Miami. And Jared Will Williams getting up slow, the right tackle, who also transferred to Miami from the University of Houston along with Derek, Derek King. On the toss, Cameron Harris got to the outside, and he's tracked down by By Jones. Second down for Miami with 13 and change to go in the fourth. Keep the ball moving. Keep moving the chains. Find your way into the end zone. Plenty of time left in this game where you don't have to you, know, you don't have to start taking risk and going over the top to try to score in one play to hurry hurry things along. You got plenty of time. Eric King's been playing quarterback since he was three years old. And he's gonna run it himself and gets to the outside and gets cartwheeled down. For a first down, Malik Dunlap went low, and it looked like Dunlap went down after the hit. Another injury in this ball game. And NC State getting thin in the defensive backfield. Grayson, it is Miami football just short of midfield. Two minutes into quarter number four. Largest deficit tonight for Miami on a Friday night. This is Jalen Knighton, the freshman on the run. His nickname is Rooster. When he was at Deerfield Beach High School, Jalen Knighton had a big shock of red hair. And his coaches, when he would go for a long run, would yell, there goes the Rooster. And it stuck. <laughs> Physical runner for his size at 5'10", 190 pounds, but very, very talented young man. King to Mallory. And the tight end roving through the secondary just short of the 20. Well, that's not going to hurt his average. Came in averaging over around 20 yards per reception. A touchdown pass on the, their first drive of the game and continuing to, uh, to do work here late. King up top. This is nearly intercepted. Off the deflection, Jakeen Harris had a chance at it. And it's second down. That would have been his first interception of the year. Dekeen Harris over the top and helping out his linebacker, Isaiah Moore. A game of inches, they call it. 
Would have been the first turnover of the ball game as Miami playing without Brevin Jordan. So Mallory, the top tight end tonight. Jordan unavailable, but not due to the same injury as that is high. And it's brought in by Wiggins. So third down, Miami came in about two yards of play fewer this year without Brevin Jordan on the field. They have 31 points tonight, but he's always a useful guy. Third and 11. the reserve tight end Larry Hodges in scramble mode to the slot yeah, and play some zone here wondering if Tony Gibson was going to bring the house again but they're going to play zone game with only three King has to scan he's got a throw on the go and it's incomplete to the end zone so Miami down two scores will take the field goal try Laura Gallas, is, as you mentioned, has been Number 52 for Miami has just about perfect. Well, they, they talked about him having an effect on this program in the same light that De'Ara King has had this last year horrible in the kicking game. Big-time weapon, Borigales, and it is good. 41-34. Well, Friday night seems to be a points magnet. We haven't had a winning team I don't mind. under 40 in weeks. <laughs> I don't mind, big guy, at all. Love seeing some points. And great. Tons of offense. Look at that. 4 461 for Miami, 404 yards per play. And these are two even we felt like two evenly matched teams coming into tonight's game and neither has disappointed look around the country we didn't have anybody in the stands for major league baseball there was no minor league baseball and one of the hallmarks of our country in sports is friday night fireworks we didn't have friday night fireworks with our national pastime this year so college football is making up for it you're yep. on espn very nice NC State will get it back up 41-34 as Bam Knight is back to receive and he will not have a chance this time after a 100-yard house ball earlier. Well, look, Bailey Hockman, he's one of the reasons I love the ESPN high school football games that we do because when Craig Hobart and I were doing those games in 2015, we went to the suburbs of Atlanta Powder Springs, Georgia, McEachern High School, and watched Bailey Hockman. We were out in the crowd. We hung out with some of the fans. He was the next up-and-coming thing at that point. He's now on his second college, but he's having a career night tonight for NC State. This is a run, and down goes the runner, Houston, and he got yanked down hard by Silvera. I mean, tremendous penetration up front. Silvera right there. I mean, he just took Grant Gibson right to the ball carrier. That is a big dude. Hockman. Second down throw, and he'll get a couple of the yards back, but not a whole lot if Mezzi and it's third down for NC State. Trying to get about half of it on second down to where you set yourself up where you can convert on third down. And Now what you don't want Bailey Hockman to do is try to do too much. Give you a catch and run for the first down, but if you're not throwing the coverage, don't make a mistake here that will cost your team. No turnovers so far in the game under 10 minutes to go. That one on one at the bottom of the screen. Miami's going to bring heat and they're going to play man across the board. See him sliding down. Now he's got what he wants down at the bottom here. He's going to run away from the pressure down to the bottom. A big hit as the ball goes flying away. 
and NC State is going to have to punt as Hockman got pummeled. Looks like he's trying to set up a screen again uh, to the back, Houston. Number 32. Irvin Hall back to receive, kill the punter. One score game, Miami looks to get it back. A lot of pointing at the line. Line drive kick, Hall's wrapped up at the 35 yard line. Miami will have it in a seven point game next. See Oregon coming up tomorrow night on ABC, 7.30 Eastern Time. Keaton Slovis now back for USC as well as they will get underway tomorrow. Miami here trailing by seven with the ball back and behind a block from Harris. De'Ara King tried to turn the corner and he got threaded out of bounds by Jones, second down. He's just trying to outflank NC State's defense to, to get him in a second down and, and maybe medium situation but I tell you what NC State's playing sideline to sideline right now King again keeps it himself and he jogs inside to cut it loose across midfield and well across the 40 yard line to Eric King slicing through past a missed tackle from Jackson yeah, nice 27 yard run is he shows it inside and then breaks a couple of tackles, makes a few guys miss, and boy, that he is he is one tough competitor. He is competing tonight. He hands it off this time. Cameron Harris, strong run, and he dives to the marker for yet another first down. So Miami's cooking with under nine to go. Well, Derek King on the night. 327 yards passing and he's got at 100 yards on the ground just trying to wheel his team across the finish line here at king got way late on that throw and he still hit a strike to pope my goodness well, if you don't believe you believe now man watch this they bring the heat right in his face and he throws an absolute dime standing right in the pocket facing the pressure man what a play from De'Eric King and now this is a run for Knight and second down King and Kyle Trask were battling in high school for the quarterback job at Manville King better fit the offense but they played together they've trained together and now big time quarterback in the state of Florida Second down run, third and goal. What's your play call here? I'm going to show it inside to, to Knighton and have King get King on the edge. Either, you know, where it's a roll or just a straight run. They've run it a couple of times where they have Harris lead him and then he's just trying to get to the edge and get in the end zone. Even they've had a pretty good deal of success with that. But I would definitely, it would definitely be in his hands in, the, in terms of a, an RPO of some sort. Give the option, runner pass. Harris, the running back. Hodges, the tight end. Play clock moving down. De'Eric King off the low snap, rolling out, has the choice. And diving to the goal line, he is just short. By a half a yard, De'Eric King short. Larry Hodges was the intended receiver, and I'm not sure if he didn't slip or stumble out of the route. King was ready to go to him and saw him stumble. I am he's going to go quick here. Biggest play of the game and maybe the season for Miami now. Fourth and goal. Handoff and a high jump to the end zone. And wait a second. Harris was in, but the officials have blown the play dead. There will be no play. Prior to the snap, we were contacted by replay. The previous play was the one that was short of the goal line. Was on the further review. Now, if you're Manny Diaz on the sideline, you're saying, "No, no my guy was in on this play, so yeah. I don't need the other play." Thank you very much. Exactly right. 
you're hoping that they let it go and okay we're fine with it being short because it looked like Harris had gone over the top and gotten himself into the end zone. We'll get a look at it, then we'll bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin. The official call on the field was short of the goal line for De'Eric King. Now we will watch it together as King tries to lean for the goal line. Uh, Matt, do you see anything there that would be enough video evidence to overturn the call of down? Uh, I didn't originally, but I think on that end zone view, his knee was down with the ball short of the goal line. It's not a down-the-line view, but I do think he was short. From the original line view, I also thought he was short. I had this exact situation in a bowl game one time where the team scored on the next play. Replay was trying to shut it down, so I know exactly what the crew is going through. But right there, looks like his knee's down before he stretches out. So, yeah. Any chance they move it back? No. What, what do you mean move it back? I mean, say say they say he's back at squarely the one-yard line. While they're watching this, is there a chance that they could move it back? At the further Normally view, they would the ruling on the field stands. Yeah, it's my understanding yeah. that if it's not a touchdown, they're not going to move it back, right? That's exactly correct. They can only move it in relationship to a first down or a touchdown. If it was short, they could say it's a touchdown. Um, or a first down, short as a first down, or it's not a first down. But, yeah, they're not going to move it up six inches because it was a poor spot. All right, so fourth and goal. That's how much he's got to get. Boy, can you imagine what how ticked off Manny Diaz is going to be if they don't get this in with that replay blown? Harris is in but a flag down there was a whistle as the snap was coming so that play is not going to count either false start offense number 62 five yard penalty fourth down it's the right tackle jared williams you still got to go for it but the play call how does it change here andre well now instead of you know being Predominantly, hey, we're just going to move them off the ball and 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 empower our way into the the end zone with a running game. Now it's you've got to spread things out a little bit. Well, uh, they're they're actually going a totally different direction by kicking the, the field goal here. And I, what I do just you think don't know if I would do that if you know with with the offensive production that NC State's having. Sometimes that's got to be because the chance he will not NC State the 25 but first we take a look at NC State's offensive line our protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate Boy the big left tackle Ikeem Ekwanu has done one heck of a job tonight watch him here on the throwback to the quarterback out in space big old athlete let me look somebody up and put him on their back We'll get him a thing of syrup tomorrow for pancake block. Let me admire my work right here. Let me make it easy. One hand blocks he's throwing. And having a good time on the sideline with his offensive line buddies. What a night for him. He'll get his own bobblehead doll at some point after that. Hockman to throw on the run. And Hockman is on target. Rolling the pocket for a first down to Devin Carter. And he'll get, I guess, bottles of syrup for pancake blocks. The offensive lineman, that's their reward. That's some good stuff. Hey, that's that's a win for any offensive lineman, man. <laughs> Get to some breakfast. First down. Bam, Knight turning his back. He's yeah. Been really good after the contact tonight. You ever hear the phrase of getting skinny in the hole where you make yourself small? He, he is absolutely fantastic at doing that. You never get a shot on Bam Knight. He sees guys coming, he's able to react, gets his body smaller, able to wedge his way through, and when there's nothing there, there's you wind up with some kind of game. Brooks in motion, and nothing there for Knight. That is Nesta Jade Silvera on the stop, third down, and a huge chance for Miami to get the ball back. Again, they're a game back in the loss column of first and second in the ACC and could pick up a game with a win tonight with Notre Dame and Clemson playing tomorrow. Got to be on alert for some pressure here if you're Bailey Hockman trying to pick up this, this first down. Here they come. 
Moshe at the bottom, Phillips at the top, those talented defensive ends. Now pressure hops from the slot, and they will bring five and get there. Hockman goes down. It was to Corey Couch from the slot who got in there first along with Phillips. And it's the, the one mistake all night, and it comes at the wrong time for Bam Knight. He misses the blitzer off the edge, and that allows Couch to get to the doorstep of Bailey Hockman, and Miami's going to get it back again. Irvin Hall to return the punt from Gill, who's only booted two tonight. Punt safe for Miami, looking for a return for Hall. On the drift, put it on the carpet, now gives some ground, and he's inside the 20-yard line, Andre. Boy, tough. It started bad, and you turn it, you have it go from bad to worse. Luckily, he got the ball back. If there are any other NC State players around, that ball might be might have been recovered by the team in black. And then he goes backwards. So he's going to get an earful from the special teams coach along with Manny Diaz at some point. De'Eric King, under four to go. He gets spun around and just barely got it away, it looked like. Isaiah Moore had him hogtied, and King did not have his knee down, at least was the initial call. A bunch Better. of yards on the line here as he was inside the 15, and now a flag for grounding. Yeah. It's a grounding. Offense number one. Philly is also down to the spot of the foul. Second down. All right, Matt Olson, our rules expert here. Matt, what do you think of that call? Uh, this is a very good call. The ball was snapped on the hash mark. The quarterback, in order to avoid intentional grounding, needs to get outside the tackle box and get the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got outside the tackle box even close. So I think this is a very good call. Oh, he was definitely inside the tackle box. And so King actually gets harmed by getting rid of it instead of taking the sack, although the intelligent play was to try to find a receiver. Second and 18 for De'Eric King. Stepping up, King down the middle, and he's got it! Harley down the seam, first down, Hurricanes! Boy, no, uh, no pressure whatsoever, right? You know, just no problem, just step right into a throw in the middle of two deep zone and hit Mike Hartley right down the middle for a first down. Cameron Haynes, and again, De'Eric King when he decided to transfer, he moved away from home. He had to go somewhere else, even with all the trouble that he's had in his family with his mom's illness, his father passing away in February. But De'Eric King wanted games like this and moments like this. And you see the numbers tonight. King keeps it this time. Over the top and incomplete. Couple of defenders there, including Dunlap, who got a hand on it. Third and seven. Yeah, we saw Dunlap leave the game earlier with cramps. Who used to be a West Virginia Mountaineer with a defensive coordinator, Tony Gibson, was there. He's now at Miami for this. It's a simple slant route. You see the pressure's coming in the middle of the field, wide open. I love the route because Hartley, Hartley flattens it out, makes it a little bit easier throw for De'Ara King, who's staring down a bunch of loose blitzers coming in his face and gets it out on time. Hartley's able to keep his balance, and then it's just a foot race to the end zone. What a play at the perfect time in this ball game. When you say he flattened it out, what changed it to the positive for De'Ara King with the pressure? Well, usually a, a slant route is at an angle. Sometimes when you feel a defender coming over the top, you're able to flatten, and it almost looks like sort of like a little square in, but quick, and that, that allows you as a quarterback to identify it, see it, get it out quickly. It's going to hit Harley right in the middle of his shoulder pads, and now it's just, hey, go to work. Make a play for him. Brett Lashley told us that with De'Ara King, the thing he loves most about him is... Every day you get the same guy. Every situation you get the same guy. Highly talented, always consistent. 
And that young man has a touchdown for Miami. And now Andre Bailey Hockman gets the ball in his hand. A young man out of the state of Georgia who's had a marvelous night. Well, they started the drive throwing the football, their prior drive. And as a big completion, they're moving the ball. And then they run it two times in a row and put a lot of pressure on Bailey, Bailey Hockman. I would, hey, you got to go score now. So things open it up. 243 left, two timeouts, know the situation. We've got to move the ball. Let's play quickly here and get ourselves at least, at the very least, in field goal range to send this in o into overtime. We saw Don hit from 53 earlier. Hockman off the tip, and there's the first turnover tonight. Intercepted by DJ Ivy for Miami. Will we get to see the turnover chain? Five chain <laughs> in and out of the intended receiver's hands a little bit thrown a little bit wide of a mezzi and right into the hands of ivy who's sitting right outside as, as a corner waiting on that one and here we go Eight with the florida around turnover chain day ivy yeah love it love it there have been a lot of turnover items on the sideline, but the original comes out tonight. And now Miami trying to put this game away on a first down run for Cameron Harris. And NC State with two timeouts is gonna have to use its second of the second half right here. The Eric King tonight, Andre Ware. I mean, if you're giving out the Heisman for one game, Ooh, if, you know, hard not here to, we go. Our players to give it to him after this by State Farm. Well, what a night. The night came out. Big run on fourth and one. Fools everybody. And a nice long run to set up a touchdown pass to Mallory. Then he comes back and he's throwing dimes all over the place. Wiggins. Hartley in the corner. He didn't stop there. He's still going. I mean, a pump fake. He's able to find Pope going up the sideline in the back of the end zone. Throwing a nice slant route to Harley was the latest one. What a night for De'Ara King and this Miami offense. When De'Ara King got to Manville High School, there were eight quarterbacks on the roster. Six of them transferred. King and Kyle Trask were left. And now they're both playing huge roles in the state of Florida at the quarterback position in college football 2020. Well, he has sent a message to the ACC and the rest of the country. Blitz me if you want. Question my deep ball throwing if you want. Just go look up the NC State film. Yeah, there's a final timeout for NC State. And to that point, Andre, going down the stretch of this season, teams are going to have to defend him differently, don't you think? No, no doubt about it. I mean, they came in, they thought, and they being NC State, thought, well, you know, there's some shortcomings in, in his game. Hard to find them, but the deep ball they thought was one of them. And they were going to pressure him on third downs. That was the game plan. Get the ball out of his hands, force him at times to invite him to throw the deep ball where he hadn't been accurate. The first five games, as we mentioned, six of 29 in those situations. But last week, it started to turn a turn on turn itself on its head where he went six for seven in that category so it's carried over to tonight and he's been exceptional throwing the ball deep tonight 523 total yards tonight the eric king coming up next saturday carter finley stadium again 7 30 eastern time on acc network it's florida state who's got a tough one with pitt coming up tomorrow if you don't have ACCN, go get ACCN.com for instant access. The Eric King on third down. Got the edge, got a first down, and he goes down smartly at the 10-yard line. What a smart play. He could have scored, and unlike Daniel Jones, he decided to fall intentionally. His job there, just smart. Always thinking the game through knowing the situation that is part of playing the position 
to keep your, keep your team in a position to win. And realizing that NC State, they're out of timeouts, the exact perfect thing to do. Look at and the total now yards. they lead the play clock. Yeah, look at the total yards from Miami tonight. Over a thousand in the game between both teams. Miami couldn't decide whether or not there was enough time to take a knee or otherwise. Somebody yelled timeout. Timeout, Miami. First, 30 second timeout. Sports Center follows our game. Michael Leaves, John Anderson, Notre Dame attacking Clemson without Trevor Lawrence. DJ Uyanga Lale at quarterback for Clemson once again. Oregon and USC into the favorites column in the Pac 12 and then the top 10 NFL plays from Russell Wilson so far. Uh, you saw Rhett Lashley trying to fire up his offense. You talked about Rhett Lashley and, and how much offense he has in his mind yeah. and where he came from with Auburn. Uh, he's also got a sense of humor. He, he dressed up his twin sons as Harry and Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber for Halloween. <laughs> Knowledge in, the, in that offensive room with him, as you mentioned earlier. Garen Justice, the offensive line coach, was the offensive coordinator at UNLV. Rob Lincolns was the offensive coordinator at Arizona State. They share, they share a lot of ideas in that in that offensive room. And, well, that's a, there's a lot of knowledge on how to get it done in the offensive meeting room at Miami. So with the timeout, with the play clock at 40, Miami just has to take a couple of knees to run this thing down and the Miami Hurricanes with opportunity on the horizon with Clemson and Notre Dame playing tomorrow will pick up a game on somebody in the ACC standings and second place gets you to the title game in Charlotte uh, there are tiebreaker scenarios it could go down to the fifth tiebreaker if it's Notre Dame but this is a must-have that the Eric King and Miami are going to get tonight Miami's coaches say get away. We got this game. We don't need any post play malfeasance All Right Miami was down by 10 41 31 with 11 minutes left Andre Ware and Manny Diaz decided to kick a field goal. That's going to end up being the deciding vote In this Friday night football game hey, What he, he bet on his defense and they came through for him and got the ball back with a chance to put Derek King in a situation to lead him down and win the ball game, and he did exactly that. Woo. Friday what night. night, partner. Yeah, Friday night energy is starting to feel like Joe Test in the Mountain West back in the day now. 44-41, <laughs> Miami over NC State is your final score. For Marty Smith, Andre Ware, our entire crew, Jason Benetti saying farewell.